Our next speaker is co-founder and managing director at Arjuna Capital. Please welcome Natasha Lamb. I love that song. <laughs> Hello. I am so happy to be here with all of you. We're here to talk about seismic shifts. And for those of you that want seismic shifts, for those of you that want gender equity and that want to be able to change your slides. <laughs> change can seem slow. But every change starts slow. With a single drop of water, with a single crack, with a single shift, in perspective. And that is why everyone here is so important. Every single one of you. My own seismic shift came the moment I was born. When my father said, put her back. That single comment, that single moment, set me on a journey before I was even aware of it. And although the comment itself was cruel. Resistance to the idea that girls are worth less than boys. Resistance to the idea that women are worth less than men. That became my superpower. I know the value of women. I know my value. I know it to be true. But we don't always see the truth. We are swimming in a sea. We're underwater. And it is believed in this sea that the feminine is worth less than the masculine. And until we break through the surface, we won't see it any other way. There will be no change. When the astronauts went to the moon, they saw the Earth rise. That shift in perspective is called the overview effect. And once they saw the Earth from the moon as the tiny blue marble that it is, they couldn't see it any other way. It was a seismic shift in perspective. My son, James, came home from the first grade, and he said to me, Mama, the kids at school just don't care about gender equity like I do. <laughs> <laughs> it 
the boys have formed a boys team, and the girls have formed a girls team, and they won't let me play with them. <laughs> James, simply in hearing me speak about gender equity, sees it differently, and he can't see it any other way. He wants everybody to play together. Once you've gone to the moon, once you've seen it from a different perspective and started that personal journey, you can't go back. When my business partners and I named our company Arjuna Capital, it was to acknowledge that everyone has a unique role to play in this world. The story of Arjuna is one of an archer and a warrior. In an epic Indian poem, the Bhagavad Gita, and as Arjuna heads into a messy battle, he experiences moral doubt. And he calls on Krishna, the metagod, to help him determine whether he should move forward and fight. To help him determine his path of right action in a morally complex world. When Krishna opens his mouth, Arjuna sees the entire universe and his role within it. It's the overview effect. He's enlightened. <clears throat> and he knows that his path is to take action and to fight and to use the arrows in his quiver. We all have a role to play. We all have a superpower. And we all have a leverage point. My leverage point is money. And in the case of Arjuna Capital, it's activating the power of money to create positive change. This is what money looks like. It's a lot of dudes. It looks like the financial crisis. It looks like war. It looks like climate change. It looks like dominance. And it looks like imbalance monetary and planetary imbalance. It's not a good look. But interestingly enough, girls have a superpower. And if we can shift the balance, it turns out that more women in leadership more women on boards, more women in general, leads to better results, better financial results. And for those of you that don't watch PJ Masks, that's Owlette. So apparently, I have a plan to topple the patriarchy. From the Boys Club of Silicon Valley to the Boys Club of Wall Street. And thanks to the New York Times, whether this is working or not, I not only blink in this spiffy animation, but the guys lean in. 
What I really have is a leverage point. I have an arrow in my quiver, and that arrow is the power of money, the power of the investor insisting on change. In 2015, we filed the first investor proposal asking a company to close its gender pay gap. We did this not only because it's the right thing to do, but because there was a business case to do so. Because it's in companies' enlightened self-interest to pay women a fair wage, to attract and retain top talent, and to move those women into positions of leadership. That company was eBay, and the request fell on deaf ears. The board opposed it, and at the annual meeting, only 8% of investors voted for it, voted for pay equity. But we went back, and not just to eBay. The next year, we filed proposals with 10 of Silicon Valley's largest tech companies. And they started to move. First it was Apple, then it was Intel, then it was Amazon, then it was Microsoft, and so on and so on. And by the time eBay's annual meeting came around, 51% a majority of investors voted for pay equity. Once one company moved, the others fell like dominoes. We took the same approach on Wall Street, with JP Morgan, with Bank of America, with Wells Fargo, with Citigroup, and so on and so on. And the first year, they resisted. And what did we do? We persisted. And we kept coming back. Today, we've pressed 22 of the world's biggest companies to commit to disclose and close their gender pay gaps. But the work is not done. We are just breaking through the surface. The real change comes when there is balance when there's representation, and it's not 20% women on boards. It's not 30% women on boards. It is 50% women on boards. It's 50% women in the C-suite. It's 50% women holding high-paying jobs. The real change comes when decision-making changes, when more voices, more women, more women of color are at the table. You are the hero in this story. You are the hero in your story. We're here because we see the earth from a different perspective, and we can't see it any other way. We know the hero in this story is the feminine. The feminine is the hero in this story. So it's time that we access our strengths 
and we embrace our superpowers, and we use the arrows in our quiver. Because that is a seismic shift. Thank you. I get my